Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hi, and welcome to today's show. I'm Clint Evan, your host, and my special guest today is Byron Walson. How are you doing, Byron? Hey, Clint, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on the show here. Yeah, it's going to be an excellent show. A little bit of, we're going to talk about PEOs and what those things are. A little bit of my background, I am the co-founder and CEO of Standout Authority. I've got a column on entrepreneur.com and business.com, and I've taught workshops for the Small Business Administration and Creative Live, and we help executives and companies to get more leads and sales from Google and LinkedIn. A little bit about Byron. He is the business development manager for Employer Flexible, which is a PEO, professional employer organization. And uh, he's going to tell us a little bit more about that. But before we get into that, you've got a tremendous background, Byron, in business development and uh, financial planning before that. So let's just take one or two minutes right quick. Tell me a little bit about your background, your business career that has led you to this point in your, your business career. Thanks, Clint. I appreciate the kind remarks. Yeah, so I, I have uh, education in marketing um, and went right into business development and have been in it for almost four decades now. And I've been blessed to have experiences that have led me to this point in time. The first half of those four decades were spent in the healthcare field. Most of that time was spent in the healthcare field, primarily in cardiovascular equipment and disposables. Uh, being marketed to um, the healthcare field. And so I got to see a side of the economy that's about uh, 19% of our overall economy and grew up through the go-go days of the 80s and 90s when computer technology was just starting to take hold in the medical field. Exciting times. I then moved over and took a switch into the financial arena. Uh, in 1996, I actually start started, built, and ran a financial uh, advisory practice. Had a lot of fun doing it. I was a solo practice, was blessed with a lot of great clients. At a time about 2011 or so, when a lot of the industry uh, began to be, and it is even more today, um, very, very heavily regulated. It was always regulated, but very heavily regulated. As a solo practice, it just ate up so much of my time and took away so much fun, vital time with clients. And at the same time, I had basically an offer I couldn't refuse, so I sold the business. However, nice. as far as today has led me to my opportunity, which we'll get into more in a minute, as a business consultant and has prepared me more uh, to do what I'm doing now in knowing what a business owner goes through at two o'clock in the morning and what wakes them up at night. So <laughs> it's, it's given me a lot of valuable experience in that regard. Like you peered right into my life. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's fascinating that you had a successful sale and exit. So very cool there. As you talked about, you've been in business development for most of your career. What reasons attracted you to work with Implex, employer flexible? Yeah, that's a great question. I it came along at the right time. There's two reasons primarily, and I and I'll give them both from a company and an industry aspect. From an industry aspect, when I was first contacted about this opportunity, I do did my due diligence on the industry. The industry is phenomenal in its growth potential. I know it's an overused cliche, but we are at the bottom of the hockey stick, getting ready to turn up. We'll talk more about that. I know later, but uh, there's a very small market penetration and a phenomenal. Uh, uh, possibility of helping business owners out there. So that really attracted me again from those aspects. I am a, a true business builder at heart, an entrepreneur at heart, and I love to solve problems. From, an, from a company perspective, Employer Flexible has some really open-minded, out-of-the-box type approach to solving problems. Uh, again, I know we'll talk a little bit about this more later, so I won't get too in-depth right now, but they are totally open to possibilities, thus the flexible part of the name, to how we come in and help business owners impact what matters. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, I just wanted those. So there were clearly some company-specific reasons to work with them as well as looking at the industry. And 
Let's talk a little bit now about this term, PEO, Professional Employer Organization. It gets thrown around in some circles today, but <laughs> still a fairly young industry. What the heck is a PEO? Well, first of all, let me answer that a couple of ways. Let me first preface my remarks by saying we have to be careful in our industry, like a lot of industries out there, but even more so in ours, I think, Clint, is that these, these abbreviations, these, these, these alphabet soups get thrown around. And so when you're sitting in front of a business owner, he or she could get confused real fast when you start talking about all the initials and everything else. Jarvis, so I always yeah. laugh when I hear PEO, because if you want to make somebody doze off in a hurry, you say PEO. <laughs> PEO, I'll tell you my experience. When I was first contacted about the opportunity, the gentleman who contacted me said, hey, I'm so-and-so and I, I'm calling you. I, I see you have quite a background in business development and is also as a consultant. And I think you'd be great in the PEO industry. And I paused and said, that's fantastic. What's a PEO? You want me to be and a he PE he said, well, a PEO, that what what's that? I said, yeah, you want me to be a PE teacher? Is that what it is? Yeah, exactly. I mean, my mind's going in all kinds of directions. So I said, uh, so he, he answered, he said, well, that's a professional, let me, I'm going to have to take a breath in the middle of this, a professional employer organization. I said, that is amazing. What's a professional employer organization? He said, well, and, and, and this gets to the meat of it. What we do is we come in and listen to the business owner and help them solve issues around employment. And those issues could be in the areas of human resources, payroll, employee safety, like workers' compensation, or benefits. Okay, gotcha. So safety, payroll, benefits, and, and what was the other thing? Culture? Human resources. Human resources. Okay. And, and we'll talk, I know we'll talk a little bit more. I'll give you some examples of stories about human resources. Human resources is the, the number one way that we can come in and bring power to an organization. To a small gotcha. business. Well, let's talk a little bit company specific now. How are employer flexible and yourself innovating in this professional employer organization? Okay. Uh, the standard model, uh, the PEO business is fairly young as industries go. It's been around for several decades now. The, set, the, the standard model, which was pioneered by the larger companies in our industry, was to come in and bring in sort of a canned, off-the-shelf, off-the-rack kind of solution. In other words, to take all the aspects of human resources and workers' compensation payroll and benefits, and bundle it all together, which there is true power in that, but to have one solution. And that was a pro in the early going. It was a positive in the early going. However, as the industry evolved and developed and more and more small businesses started to, to look at this as a possible solution, what was working up to that point for some somewhat larger companies did not necessarily work for small businesses. In other words, you come in and you say, I will do all of this and it's X amount per employee per month or X amount percentage of payroll or whatever. And the owner would typically say, well, I don't need this and I don't need that. We are not doing this. And they would say, oh, well, I'm sorry. That's, that's the model. So what employer flexible prides itself on, as I indicated earlier, was listening to what matters and then custom designing the solution to that particular business owner so that they are getting the most efficient turbocharged engine of a solution for the area that they're trying to address. I got you, which seems like that adds multiple uh, potential layers of complexity when you don't have, you know, three basic packages that you can fulfill in a certain time period from employer flexible standpoint. Uh, you got a better idea if you got three basic packages. Here are my costs. Here's, you know, the, the human resource investment, the time investment to fulfill on this for our client versus something a la carte or completely custom. That's the way things have gone in this, this digital age as we continue to march forward, but obviously adds uh, some difficulties and disruptions. And uh, cool to see you guys are 
continuing to innovate, have that built into your culture um, to continue to provide those custom solutions. Sure. So let's talk a little bit about, you said, uh, you know, in any type of business, you like to solve a problem and preferably a problem that your prospects, the people you're talking to that have that problem, understand they have the problem and also it's painful enough they're willing to pay for the solution. So tell me about the problem you solve for CEOs and business owners and, you know, in a lot of cases may not even know they have a problem or, or how bad it is or how much, they're, sure. how much money they're losing. Sure. Well, the number one I, I mentioned earlier about human resources, and that's a term that's thrown around <clears throat> quite a bit, but I mentioned that we could bring a lot of power to the table. Let me give you a specific example of what I'm talking about. I've had several clients who I've sat down with and, and, and a couple of things come out in our talks, in our conversation, one of which is they have trouble finding the right employees. They may be in an area that's uh, like the Austin area, which is Austin, Texas is booming. And if they're on the outlying of that area, the, the, the maybe the suburban type portion of that area, it's hard to get that employment from the core of Austin to come to those outer areas. So they have sometimes trouble finding the right employees. And then they have trouble keeping those employees. And so where this becomes a real problem for the business is now you've spent time trying to find the right employees and maybe you did attract some employees that were good, although it's not your specialty most of the time or your expertise. But then the employee gets hired away because they're in a booming market and that employee leaves and they may have been on board four months. Now, let's think about this. The business owner, any business owner, as just about any prudent person, if they go to buy something, let's say the business owner was going to buy an asset. That could be a vehicle, a piece of equipment, something of that sort. What are they going to do? They're going to specify what they're looking for. They're going to look at their choices. They're going to probably test drive it. And they're going to take a hard look before they spend forty or $50,000 or more on that asset. Well, yep. the employee is an asset to the company. And so they just wasted $40,000 or more in most cases by hiring people and losing them. And so what we do, wow. and, and so what exactly, so what we do is get them to focus on the fact that A, you're not finding the right employees many of the time, so that's the cause, or B, many times you're not offering the kind of benefits you could be offering at a significantly lower cost to the business than you ever dreamed by using the kind of model we bring in, the leverage type model, and thereby creating a, an environment where the employee literally feels like they're being re recruited every day instead of being recruited and becoming a staff member, so to speak. Gotcha. Yeah. The excitement and the parade of the, the recruitment and the first day and then 30 days later, you feel like a forgotten person. Exactly. And cog in the exactly. exactly. Um, so you talked about, do you, you guys help with finding and finding talent and um, helping them hire talented employees? Absolutely. That's wow. part of the service. That's part of our HR expertise. We actually started, by the way, as a side note, uh, in 2004 as a staffing, recruiting and staffing company. It was after a few years of doing that and having some great results, providing great services to clients that we were presented with the with some things we could do for our clients, which was a, I'm going to use those initials again, a PEO model. And when we did that and became real good at that, by 2008, we had sold our staffing business. But remember, we retained the recruiting uh, intelligence and uh, expertise. Okay. So, yeah, if a company wants to hire you and says, hey, we've got five employees or 10 employees, I'm the owner, I don't have time to continue to have a recruiting system to have, as Gary Keller calls it, uh, an all-star level bench of pot potential players that you keep in touch with. And, you know, if if they decide to leave their company three or six months from now, you know, you're one of the first calls they make. Uh, you guys have that kind of type of system that you can offer for clients to bring in, you know, A and B level talent. Absolutely. That's the flexibility. Again, it depends, Clint, on where they want us to plug in. 
They yeah. may want us to plug in at just finding the right employees or potential candidates, and they take it from there. Or they may say, hey, here's my job description. Here's my filters. Here's my requirements. You guys find them. You bring them to the table. In some cases, they have us interview them. Some cases, they have us interview them and hire them. It just depends on what depth and level they want us to take this. Customization again. Yep. And do you guys, with that expertise, also give some coaching? I'm sure you've seen a lot of these. Uh, job descriptions where there's 80 different specifications and they only want to pay the person 30 or 40 grand. Do you give them some coaching on, Hey, we need these few are the most important things to this position. And you're going to have to pay the market going rate is 50 or 60 grand. Absolutely. That's part of the solution that we've been able to provide for those examples I gave earlier. Uh, we start off with an industry analysis for the area. So that okay. most times, most times the owners don't have a clue, or even if they have a clue, they really don't know for sure that they understand what's it going to take to get XYZ employee to do ABC job in this area. And we're able to give them that feedback and the kind of competition they're running up against, in addition to being able to give them such enhanced features, benefits to the employment at a very low cost that makes them now as a small business extremely competitive with the large businesses of the area, big tech companies, for example. Yeah, that coaching and consulting is critical because I've talked with a number of business owners and in the business I have helping companies and executives you know, grow their business, leads and sales. And a lot of times they'll just pull, you know, they'll go on to Craigslist or monster.com, some of these other places and search for similar job titles or postings and just copy and paste what they feel is the best, uh, you know, of the job descriptions and tasks and just put together a mashup and then, you know, want to undercut, cut the pace. So you're providing a huge, that's a huge problem of just not, not knowing the market analysis, like you said, and not knowing what's most important and what it's going to cost. And I think I remember as a conversation you and I had, and what did you say? Um, I forgot the exact thing, but something, something, uh, you know, companies need people and people cost money or something. It was a very good, succinct saying. Um, well, there's, there's, I like to say there, there is, uh, and it ties into people here. There is uh, two things that will solve a problem and that's time and money. And both of them cost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was remembering that. He's like, yeah, it's uh, you can have a time or people and people cost time or people. Correct. Yep. Correct. Love it. Um, so let's talk a little bit now. You also, when you and I had talked, you had a very useful visual demo that you go through with, with business owners to help illustrate what's going on here. So why don't you talk about that now? Yeah. Thanks. The, the way that I explain to a business owner, what, what are the critical elements that I bring? What Boil it down. What do I do for that business owner? And so the two that I give them as an example are, are, are the, the, the actual distillation of what I give them is time that I give them and liability that I take away. So what does this look like? So as a business owner, I've been there. You start the business, and what's one of the drivers of the business? You want 100% of control and direction, and you get that as the business owner. At the same time, at that point, you have 100% of the liability for that company and that any employees that work for that company. That double-edged sword, and, yeah. And so that's a sticking point. That's a negative. When you engage the services of an of a entity like Employer Flexible, what will never, ever, ever change will be 100% of control and direction. You always maintain that as the, as the owner and the employer. You always determine that. What does change is that virtually all of that liability that I talked about comes off of your side of the ledger and goes on to the employer flexible side of the ledger. And now you're freed up from both a liability and a time standpoint to focus on working on your business and not 
worried about working in your business, almost like you're an employee yourself. Wow. Okay. I got you. And I think you did like a line across the top and the bottom and you showed the four, four quadrants of ways that you uh, help business owners. Right, right. So, so just to, to go back and kind of touch on that again. So on the left-hand upper quadrant is uh, the human resources portion of that. And again, that could be finding pe- everything from finding the right people, hiring the right people, keeping the right people. It can be updating and making sure that you're protected by your employee handbook. That's one of the number one ways that you're exposed. And uh, it could be training, simple as training. Training, we'll talk a little bit more about this here in a few minutes, I know, but training is a positive way to get that, that, that organizational culture up and positive. And so it could be training. Another way in the top right portion is through employee safety. A primary way is through both safety training and workers' compensation, which by virtue of the fact that four people can pay less for something than one person, and 12 people can pay less than four people and so on, you're able to use the leverage of our company to, to drive down cost as far as associated with workers' compensation. Wow. Okay. Uh, so you almost got a Costco type of concept. Absolutely. Buy, buying power for employee benefits and HR and some of these other areas. It's just common sense. 6,000 people will pay less than one person for 10 people. Right, so, because employer so, flexible has exactly. multiple business clients, and that one small business owner may have only 10, 50, or 100 employees. Exactly. And so you're able to take advantage of that model. Same thing goes for benefits in the lower right corner, which is a great example in a hot area right now is health insurance. Well, think about it. We now have a large company like plan to offer to your small business at a small business affordable price because those costs are spread out so thin between all the business owners. So that's just one example of the benefits area that we're able to pass that on. And then there's payroll. And payroll, can, can we can talk more in a minute about what the power of, uh, or, or the changing implications in our industry and where it's going in the future. But, but payroll and the, automa- the continued automation of payroll by virtue of technology gains is powerful. And when you can have a personalized per- payroll team, sort of by, like uh, air traffic controllers with a primary controller who's your payroll person who is at your disposal, for example, that's powerful. And then you've got the technology kicking in as well that you get you the, uh, the key performance reports and all with everything up to what we call our kitchen sink report that has everything in it. So you have the reporting, you have the information, but you don't have the headache of trying to do payroll. Okay, I got, yeah, probably, I probably don't even understand all the, the intricacies there, but I love that visual that you created about the air traffic control room that almost everybody has an idea of what that is, and then the, the manager, I, I'm thinking back to, um, what was it, Die Hard 2, where they were in the, <laughs> the, the Washington, D.C. airport, yes. that, that guy's McLean and, and the other cop, and, you know, trying to direct everything that was going on there in that situation. Yeah. Exactly. Well, think about it yourself. If you call an 800 number and sit on hold for 15 minutes waiting to talk to a stranger, that's then you're the next one in the queue. Is that more efficient? Or if you could pick up the phone and talk to, to Bob or Susan, who's your payroll person at Employer Flexible. Oh, by the way, if Bob's at lunch, there's three other people that are there could take your call immediately that know your situation that are on the team. That is a powerful time saver. Again, getting back to giving or putting more time back into the business owner's available schedule for other productive activities versus this. So is this the whole problem around employees and all of the the things that can go wrong in those four quadrants? Is that getting worse in the business community or better? It's getting worse. And, And the reason it's getting worse is that as we add more employees, now I'll give you a great example. Typically in our industry, you start out, you start your business, you're a solo uh, operator, and then you start to add employees. And it really is in the early going, dependent on the, somewhat on the business you're in, is not that big a headache. But, but Clint, when you get to 10 employees, you're feeling the pain. And as your business grows and, de- and demands more employees by its very nature of, uh, of scope or economies of scale, 
and you start to add to that, by the time you hit 20 employees right on up into the 50 range, you're feeling a lot of pain because now 25% or more of your time as a business owner is, is devoted to employee issues. I like to say, and, and, and I have owners that, that, that really laugh at me, and some of them even want to throw me out of their office, but I'll ask them, if you could have the business make the same amount of money you make and not have employee issues, would you do it? Or I have employees. And they look at me and go, duh. <laughs> and that's what we do. We take that part of the equation off the table for them. So now they're making the same and actually more money, more profit without spent by, by the very nature of spending more time on their core business and not dealing with these issues. Wow. Okay. Let's talk. I like how you started those numbers because that was where I was going to take us our, our next direction down the path here. As a business is growing, what advice and, and systems and processes should an owner or an executive set up right now so they can head off any potential problems before they start increasing their workforce? I'd say the number one thing that I could give them, and it's it's very common knowledge among the the esoteric elite out there in business academia, and that is if you are a small business, especially, you need to outsource everything you have except your core business because it is critical that you work on your core business and continue to grow it. Uh, and when you're worried about these other issues that you're not an expert at, and why would you want to be when, when, when you have to deal with the fact that your administrative, assist, your executive assistant comes in your office four hours a week or more to talk about her separation from her husband or, or his wife or whatever the case may be. These are the kind of things that drag you out of your business and they're time killers and they cost you money. So I heard somebody so, else describe it as babysitting other people's adult children. <laughs> sure, sure. The dog ate my homework excuses. So the, the, the bottom line is outsource everything you can. And, 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 and the other thing, we'll talk a little bit more in a minute, I'm sure. But make sure that you always, and, 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 and because I am what I am with my level of experience, I've learned. I was so money driven in my younger age and I've come to learn it's not about the money. It's about the time. The time is the most valuable asset you have. So make sure you're putting a value on your time and that you are, are therefore using your time as wisely as possible. Thus tying back into the fact that you outsource everything that does not have to do with your core business. Yeah, that whole the real estate concept that's been around forever, highest and best use of your time, and of course, uh, money resources and, and human resources. So, Byron, let's talk a little bit about now, we're talking about growing companies before we leave this topic, and what are two or three common factors you see in companies who seem to grow along a fairly smooth path? versus those companies who take one step forward and two steps back and have that roller coaster of frustration? Hey, that's a great question. And I, and I think the best example I can give of that is there's a gentleman named Patrick Lencioni. I don't know if you're familiar with him or not. He wrote the book, The Advantage. And in the book, what he talks about is two areas that distinguish whether a company is simply a company that's in it and 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 for a short period of time and then goes out of business or does not thrive as much as they could the delta or difference between that company and a company that thrives and lasts a long time and the companies that that do that that are in business they have some success they grow they typically are company smart when it comes to, or smart, I should say, when it comes to corporate wealth or company wealth. Now, what is that? That could be strategies of the company. You can have people come up with great strategies. That could be good marketing. That could be finance. That could be the technology involved. These are all critical factors to whether a company can even start to grow and, and grow somewhat. And they're important, not to say company wealth. 
What is not paid attention to, but is by those companies that thrive and are and are continue to thrive over the long haul, is company health. And what do I mean by company health? Things like minimizing politics, minimizing confusion. So everybody's focused on the same page, having a high amount of morale, therefore a high amount of productivity, low amount of turnover. We like to say in this business, a happy employee is a productive employee. Too many times, especially growing companies, do not pay enough attention to the company health. They're too focused on company wealth. Very vital to have company wealth. You need to make sure that you're doing everything you can to have company health in balance to that. Yeah, it's one of the things that uh, I had not put a huge amount of emphasis on myself until I learned about it over the last couple of years is the importance of that culture. And I think you talked about it as part of the employer flexible expertise is finding, making sure the business owner is clear on what type of person, what type of character, what type of core values they want to hire for. And as part of the overall culture, you're going to have more engaged employees and more productivity and a, and a smoother flow there. So sure. I love what you're saying. Let's get into our final point here for this interview. Earlier on, you said the PEO industry is growing. And of course, there's always changes in any industry, whether it's growing or contracting. What changes do you see for your industry over the next five years? I think the number one change you're going to see is the fact that technology, like for so many of us, is, is changing, is a constant dynamic out there that's changing the equation somewhat. The, the, the major change you can see in the PAO industry is, is, is more and more automation, number one, of, of areas like payroll, more and more transparent automation of information, of data, to both the employer and to the employee through PCs, mobile devices, you name it, when they want the information, when an employee wants to go in and wants to say, hey, let me go to my HR. Well, what's my HR? I can see what my last 12 paychecks or 26 paychecks were and detail about them. Uh, let me look at my benefits. Oh, I need to get a hold of, of uh, my insurance cards, anything like that. With the employer, uh, can go in and access reports and information about the employees that affect his business and can have it at a fingertip, either again, mobile app or through portal connection. These are the kind of things you're gonna see make the relationship between a PEO and an employer very, very rich and robust as we go forward. Outstanding, yeah, again, there's likely so much complexity on how much withholdings were taken out and not just for taxes, but for other things, voluntary things and private, uh, private services and 401ks and all that, that uh, can have a huge effect and, and help people to achieve the, the financial level and even financial freedom they're looking to achieve on their career path. Sure. So Byron, as we wrap this interesting interview, you've given us a great, eye into what a PEO is and what kind of a big problem on the employee and team side that companies face. If somebody wants to take a deeper dive with you, learn a little bit more about how Employer Flexible could help them, how would they go about doing that? You know, they can connect me through me in a number of ways. Uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter all have Employer Flexible uh, connectivity, plus uh, they have connectivity through me at those uh, levels as well. My cell phone is, uh, is, is plastered all over my signature of my email and such, but that is 512-680-8188. I accept text. Uh, I am totally connected. I would love to sit down and here's what I'd love to do. Have a conversation. And what do I mean by that? I've got a lot of gray hair, even though you can't see me, Clint. <laughs> uh, the folks can't see me. I've got a lot of gray hair and I'm not about to waste the business owner's time nor my time it, because remember time is the most valuable thing you have. So if I can't help them, we can part as friends and I can certainly help give them directions that they should take. I always tell people I have not had a meeting yet, whether I can help a person or not, 
that I couldn't leave them with some very valuable nuggets for them to take advantage and say, you know what, that 30 minutes was so well spent, it more than paid for itself. Yeah, absolutely. When you and I uh, first met up over at the the coffee house on uh, the lake over there, I learned a lot about this industry and the four quadrants and all of those things that I've then been able to uh, direct people or companies that are, are having that type of issue and say, hey, this is a, something you should consider. So like you said, it wasn't a, the right fit for me since it's me and my co-founder and some contractors, but for companies that are on that employee path, they're growing 5, 10, 20 employees. It's a hugely valuable service. Absolutely. Thank you. I, I encourage you to reach out to Byron. They can certainly help you. And thanks again for being with me on the show here today, Byron. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.